you are holy. You are holy. You are mighty. You are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy of praise. Worthy of praise. I will follow. I will follow. I will listen. I will listen. I will love you. I will love you. All of my days. All of my days. I will sing to you.
Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Thou never know how much it costs. To see my sin upon that cross, thou never know how much it costs. To see my sin upon that cross, thou never know how much it costs. To see my sin. Upon that cross, I never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely. Altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. your mighty Sing for joy and the world 
my comfort, my comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Oh, shout to the Lord. Good morning everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you all for this virtual Sunday service and I hope you are all doing well and being safe. Though we are uh, separated by the distance, still we are united in the name of Jesus Christ. And I know that each of us are going through a, a different kind of struggles and each of us is going through a different kind of storm. But I believe that God is in control and uh, definitely his arm is not too short to save us and his ear is not too dull to hear our prayers. And I also believe that no matter what we are going through, in the end, it is our God that who comforts us, like a mother who comforts a child. So let us be comforted by reading Psalm chapter 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though it, its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with a surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The, all, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes or seas to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So the scripture is clearly telling that uh, it is suggesting us not to fear, especially during the time which is beyond our control, like what we are facing today. So definitely the whole world is facing uh, this virus and not able to control it because it is beyond our control. But here the scripture is suggesting not to fear and also to depend on God and know that He is God and He is in control. Uh, whatever the fear we have today and whatever the struggles we have today, like let us focus our heart on God. And uh, in the verse 1 it says, God is our ref refuge and strength and ever present help. So definitely let us take refuge in God's shelter. Definitely He will give the delight to our heart. So uh, as we prepare our hearts to uh, to listen to the communion which will be preached by our brother Varghese and the message 
uh, which is uh, preached by uh, our brother Shiva. Uh, let us uh, commit this uh, service to God's hand and let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for uh, giving this wonderful time, Lord, that uh, we gathered here, Lord, to listen to your word and praise your name and to learn from your word, Lord. Father, thank you so much for keeping us safe, Lord, and keeping us uh, uh, under your shelter, Lord. And uh, thank you so much, Lord, uh, being with us and guiding us, Lord. Father, the whole, whole world is in chaos and it needs uh, a healing, Lord. Father, but still we hope in you, Lord. We believe in you. We know that definitely you will comfort us, Lord. And everything is happening for a reason. Father, help us to put our trust in you and, uh, and uh, help us to stand firm in our trust. Father, as we uh, move on to the service, Lord, I would like to... Pray for the brothers who are going to preach, Lord. Please be with them and help them to preach to, through your spirit, Lord. And please uh, be with each of us who is listening to this service and bless everyone, Lord. Father, I surrender everything to your hand. I love you, God. And just holy name I pray. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm very happy to talk to you all this morning. This is a time that uh, we have an opportunity to look at the cross and see how much God loved us. When I look at the cross, I just don't see a couple of wooden pieces put together. It's much more than that actually. It is about love. It is about someone who is willing to die for me. It means someone's death gave me life. When we were all lost in our own way, Christ died for us. Let me read a scripture, Romans 5.8 But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. To see, Christ did not wait for us to turn good to do something good for us. But we do that many ways. Even in our life, we wait for people to turn good, to do something good. Even with our kids, I, 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 I try to scare them about the future or uh, uh, expect them to uh, have a good behavior to do something good for them. But lucky for us, God did not wait for us to turn good, to do something good for us. Scripture is very clear, when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's pretty remarkable actually. Okay, if I really think about it, before even I could do anything, someone showed their love by dying on the cross. That reminds me that this love can be so unreasonable. This past week, if I see, I have faltered in many ways. But thank God for the cross, which reminds me that love can be so unreasonable, love can be so deep, love can be so amazing, that it opens my eyes to see the marvelous things that God has done for us. As we take part in this communion by taking the bread which represents the body of Christ which is parted on the cross and the grape juice which represents the blood of Christ which is shed on the cross. Let us remember this amazing love God has shown for us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we bow before you in humility and ask you to examine our hearts. Reveal any secret pride, any secret sin, any rebellion or unforgiveness that may be hindering our relationship with you. We know that we are your beloved children. The price you paid for us covered us for all the time. Increase our desire to live for you. As we take this bread which represents your life that was broken for us on the cross, 
we remember and celebrate your love for us you took that pain for us you died for us so that we can live thank you jesus and the same way as we take this cup representing your blood poured out from the great cross we realize that you are the supreme sacrifice for all our sins the past the present and even the future because of your blood shed on the cross for us and your body broken for us we can be free from the power and penalty of sin thank you so much for doing this for us thank you so much for demonstrating your great love like this for us we love you praise you in jesus name we pray amen There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down at the cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in all of you I'm in all of you where your love ran red and my sin washed white I owe all to you I owe all to you Jesus There's a place where sin and shame are power I surrender my life I'm in all of you I'm in all of you where your love ran red 
and my sin washed white. I owe all to you. I owe all to you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Today it's my privilege to introduce our guest speaker, Shiva Murthy, all the way from Sikkim. He got baptized 21st June 2005 and he joined ministry in 2010. He and his wife Ketu led a sector in Delhi and oversee the campus ministry in North Region and they have done a beautiful job there. They have a beautiful daughter named Adora. Currently, they are now in Sikkim leading the church. It always, it's, been, it's been always inspiring for me to see his step of faith. When the church was getting planted in Sikkim, he was willing to leave everything in Delhi to go and lead the mission team. And it was a privilege for me to work with him in Sikkim as well as in Delhi. He is a great friend to me and a brother to me. And he always helped me spiritually. So before we hear him, let's sing a song and prepare our heart to receive the word of God. Thank you. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise His name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, all His angels praise proclaim. All His hosts together praise Him, sun and moon and stars on high. Praise Him, O ye heaven of heavens, and He flies. Let them praise give Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, far above the earth and sky. Oh, let them praise his give Jehovah, they were made. shall ever stand from the earth oh praise Jehovah all in seas he monsters all fire and hail and snow and vapors stormy winds that hear his call oh let the praises give Jehovah for his name morning church i'm grateful to god for this opportunity that uh, i could speak to all of you 
I also want to thank Brother Murtaza for this initiative, for reaching out to us. I also want to thank all of you in Bangalore Church for being faithful disciples for so many years. Bangalore Church has been an inspiration and definitely a pillar and a stronghold for all our churches, not just in India, but throughout the world. The title of today's lesson is Praying for the Harvest. Let me start by thanking all of you for praying for Sikkim Mission Team. I believe strongly that each of you have contributed to our church by praying for us, by praying for the mission team. I strongly believe that prayers are such a powerful tool given by God. In past one year, I have become more and more convinced how our prayers can transform people's lives. How powerful and important our prayers for people. Someone prayed for our country. I believe many people prayed for our country. And today we have more than 7,000 disciples in our country. Someone prayed for Bangalore Church. And now we have one of the largest churches in the world and of course the largest church in South Asia. Someone prayed for you and today your life has changed. It is so important for us to go back to this basic and fundamental belief that it's our prayer that can change people's lives. The scripture for today's lesson is Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 to 38. Let me read that for you in English. The Bible says that Jesus went throughout all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. In this passage, which I believe is the passage where Jesus was training his disciples for the mission for which God has chosen us. He starts by inspiring them by his own example. In verse 35, Bible says, Jesus was the one who went throughout all the towns and villages. We see that the harvest is plentiful, but it starts by we stepping out. We willing to be in action. And Jesus starts like that. He's going through towns and villages in a time when there were not many uh, there, there was no there was not a, a good transportation system i'm sure on his feet there might have been times when it was not comfortable when he was tired we see that in passages as well but jesus was in action he leads by example but this what jesus is doing is only a trailer. The real part, Jesus didn't want it to do by himself. He actually wanted his disciples to do. He wanted you and me to do the real work. God wants to save all men, but he wants to do it through you and through me. He wants to use each of us in a powerful way that many lives may change. And that is God's plan to change this world. How can God use us in a powerful way? We will see that step by step. First point that I want to share how God can use us in a powerful way for the harvest. 
my first point is ask the lord of the harvest when we see this scripture jesus himself tells his disciples ask the lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into his harvest field we got to have a very strong conviction that saving people's lives evangelism sharing our faith is all about prayer life it's all about our faith it's not about methods or skills there is no marketing or sales strategies that is going to work unless we depend on god unless we learn to rely on god's power although we might we we although we should use many ways to reach out to people like paul said i i try everything i try to be all i i try to relate to all kind of people he tries everything to reach out to people but the root of it all starts with our prayer life asking the lord of the harvest every single day on our knees asking the lord of the harvest i became more and more convicted of this even as i came for this mission team i remember when we were coming to sikkim uh, when we came here to scout the land uh, my mentor prakash brother he told me one thing i was asking him lot of advice i was i was asking him what all we i need this is the first time i'm we are going on a mission team most of us were new we didn't know what we were doing when i was asking him can you give me some tips can you can you share your experience with me he told me i just want you to remember one thing shiva depend on god rely on prayer i think he also know me really well and he knew that i have the tendency to do many things but i can forget to pray the most important thing when we landed here in sikkim we decided that we are going to rely on god we took that as a challenge it was not something that comes natural for me but we became more and more clear and convinced that we must rely on our prayer let me share one more scripture with you in john chapter 15 verse 4 to 5 jesus said remain in me as i also remain in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me i am the vine you are the branches if you remain in me and i in you you will bear much fruit that's the promise of jesus apart from me you can do nothing i remember landing in sikkim the first thing we all did is we decided we are going to get together and we are going to pray we started jericho walks praying all over this town praying in the campus praying in the market praying on the roads asking god to open the doors asking god to guide us and we saw god answering our prayers one by one because god is always at work the first people to become part of sikkim church were kiran brother and lucky sister actually kiran brother became a disciple in 1997 in kolkata way before even i knew christ for some reason he had to go back to sikkim to be with his family but we didn't have any church in sikkim so he went back but back of his back of his mind he always missed our fellowship he went to many churches but he could not find the same teaching the same convictions which he had found and learned by being a true disciple because of this gap brother kiran was praying that god please show me a way that i can connect back to my church he was praying that if it is possible 
that our church can start in Sikkim one day. And one day, he got the contact of Sister Joyce through Facebook. He immediately contacted Prakash brother and Joyce sister and that's how this whole mission team of Sikkim, the initiative of this mission team started from there. Praying for the harvest is so important. I strongly believe that it's prayers that keeps on changing people's lives. Amazingly, one of the first people who got baptized, one of them was his own daughter when we landed here in Sikkim. His parents are also studying the Bible right now. And he's a very evangelistic brother and a great support to me over, over here. He takes me to people's houses. He, he takes me to pe people that I can study the Bible with. And in many ways, he has been a very faithful disciple. Praying for the harvest is so important. One day, when the mission team started, and every day, every Sunday, you know, before church starts, uh, we take turns and we stand outside the church hall, praying for God to send more people, praying for God to send more studies, more visitors, more friends. And one day I was just standing outside the church hall uh, uh, and I was praying, God, please send someone. And I get this call from a Tamilian doctor who found our church through Google. This brother calls me. His name is Dr. Gunesilan. He calls me and he says that, brother, I've been looking for a church and I found your church on Google. I was so excited. I said, please come. We are waiting for you. It's amazing how God works and how God answers our prayers. It's so important that we keep our prayers focused, that people's life can change, praying for the harvest. One of the sisters who got baptized in November, her name is Navamit. You know, she was praying for her husband to also change one day. Actually, her husband is the one who first got invited to church. One brother, Sukuram, who came from Nepal to serve here for two or three months only. But he reached out to many people. And so many people came and studied the Bible. But Roshan, whom he also invited, never came to church. But somehow through that invitation, his wife came to church. And she became a disciple. But of course, her desire and her prayer was for her husband to also change and become a disciple. Roshan was struggling with addictions of drugs and alcohol. But God can do anything. God works in such a powerful way that just few months of prayer and fasting and Roshan started changing. God answered our prayers. God answered Naomi's prayers. And just few weeks back, Roshan got baptized during this lockdown and became a disciple. It's amazing how God answers our prayers, right? We need to be connected to God in order to see how God is working. When our prayers are connected, when we are praying to God, we can see God working because God is always working, right? In John chapter 7, verse 17, Jesus said, My Father is always at work, right? As human beings, we have so many limitations, physical limitations. We can get weak, we can fall sick. We can't always reach out to people. We cannot, we have emotional limitations. Many times we don't understand people, what they are going through. We don't know how to talk to them or how to reach out to them. We are not present in people's life 24 into 7. But God is always working. Even when you forget the people that you have prayed for, God is still working in their lives. It is so important for us to keep on praying. 
pray for the harvest because God will keep on changing people's lives. Our second point for today, our first point was praying for the harvest. Our second point today is working for the harvest. Now coming back to our text which we read, Jesus told his disciples, ask the Lord of the harvest for what? To send out workers. The point of this passage is how there is a constant need of workers in God's kingdom. And God wants us to be his partners in the gospel. In his work of saving people, he wants you and me to work along with God. Isn't that awesome? From the beginning, that was God's plan. When God created the first man, Adam, he put him in his garden so that he can work on it. Genesis 2 verse 15. In the, in the Gospels, so many times, he calls us his workers workers in his vineyard, workers in his field. Now it would have been so good the day when we get baptized that we directly go to heaven, right? Avoid all the struggle, avoid all the problems. Remember the day when you got baptized, you were ready to go to heaven. But we don't go to heaven on that day. Why so much struggle? Why we have to go through so much of trials and all kind of things that we go through as disciples? Apostle Paul said, It is easy for me to be with the Lord, but I must be here because he knew that there is work to be done, that God wants to use us. What is interesting in this passage, our theme passage, is that right after this passage, right after Jesus said, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his field. And these disciples are the ones who are praying for it because Jesus tells them, pray about it. Pray for the people, pray for the workers. These 12 are the ones who go. Imagine these 12 disciples, they're praying that God, please send someone into the harvest field because Jesus told them, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. And after praying, right after that in next chapter, Jesus sends them. They must be thinking, hey, I was praying for someone to go and that someone is me. Working for the harvest is so important as well. Our job is to keep on sowing the seed. Our job is to keep on watering. Harvest will definitely come and it will come in abundant. Because that is the promise of Jesus that harvest is plentiful. We just need to keep on sowing the seed. We don't know how God will work but God will definitely work. When we are praying and when we are working, God is also working. Harvest is plentiful. Definitely we will get, we will get to see great things happening. And it's so important for us to not worry about the results, but keep on doing the right thing. We reached out to one brother over here in Sikkim. Um, his name is Binesh. We studied the Bible with him and we this the sister studied the Bible with his wife. He was already going to some church. So he told us that uh, thank you for teaching me the Bible, but I would like to continue going back to my church. Uh, but he was happy that his wife was also studying the Bible. His wife was not going to any church. She She was not a follower of Jesus. Somehow she had some experience of Christianity, but she was not going to any church. He wanted his wife to come to his 
to church with him but she she was just not willing so he was very happy that the when sisters were studying the bible with her he was very happy that she started studying the bible sisters kept studying the bible with her and she started changing she started repenting and she started becoming like a disciple now when the time came for her to get baptized she had to decide also to become part of our church and that's when uh, this person binesh he had an objection he said that i don't want my wife to go to your church thank you for teaching her the bible thank you for helping her to repent but i want her to go come to my church now you know, as disciples when we don't see results it can get discouraging but the sisters i appreciate their faith and they continued studying the bible with us they said it's okay whichever church she wants to go to for us it is more important that her life changes of course we want her to come to our church because we are trying to help her in the other church no one was reaching out to her but it's still your choice sisters kept studying the bible with her and after some time binesh was so convicted even though he he was not able to uh stop going to his church and stop and he took his wife also but he called us home one day and said that i have some friends who who can become part of your church if you reach out to them they want to know god they want to study the bible and he gave us contact of one of his friends his name is tipat tipat comes from a buddhist background and he is also married he has a very a small son who's just turned 1 year old but when we met tipat his son was just few months old he and his wife both come from a buddhist background and when we started reaching out to him tipat wanted to know about jesus he was already seeking god in fact he was also going to different churches but for some reason he could not found them doctrinally sound one of his confusion was about baptism he was confused that some people baptize by sprinkling water some people are baptizing by uh, dipping inside the water which one is the right way he wanted to know the truth when we met tipat he was already set to become a disciple the first study we did with him was baptism study and when we showed him the scriptures he was so convinced that this is the right way this is according to the scriptures and in the first study itself he, he said i want to get baptized we said well we would like to teach you little bit more because we want to teach you about repentance we want to help you clearly understand what it means to be a disciple within few weeks we finished his studies he decided to make jesus his lord he got baptized and right after him his wife who was also studying the bible she also decided to follow jesus and she also got baptized it's so amazing how two souls got saved but it all happened because sisters kept reaching out to binesh's wife who didn't become a disciple binesh also didn't become a disciple but he gave us deepers contact who came to church started studying the bible and became a disciple and the story doesn't end there deepat reaches out to his friends they start coming to church and one of his friends gunjan who has been studying the bible for past few weeks is ready to get baptized but he is in a red zone and his area is called as containment zone due to covid 19 we are not able to go there and baptize him but he is all set to get baptized any day now the moment this lockdown is lifted from his area i think we are going to proceed with that as well it all happened because the sisters and the brothers kept praying and kept reaching out we were not bothered about who's going to become a disciple when they are going to become a disciple we kept doing our part and god kept doing his part faithfully some of you today maybe you have reached out to people maybe you didn't see immediate results don't get discouraged don't work for results keep on doing the right things god will do his part at the right time genuinely love people and you will see amazing things happening after coming here in sikkim we studied the bible with hundreds of people 
we even lost the count. So many people we invited, so many people we studied the Bible with. And I'm sure you are doing that. But we should, we, we need to remember that God is working in their lives. Even when they say goodbye to us, even when they say that I don't want to continue studying the Bible, it doesn't mean it's over. When we have done our part faithfully, we need to rejoice and be happy because God is proud of us and God will work at the right time. Over here we studied the Bible with people like uh, some of the pastors. They came to study the Bible not because they wanted to become disciples, not because they wanted to get baptized, but they wanted to learn how we do these studies with others, the guard the gospel studies. And we studied the Bible with them just like anybody else. They didn't come to church, but they told us that you guys are doing a good job. Keep it up. And they were happy to learn from us how we were making disciples. So it's so important for us to be the workers in the field. Not just praying for the harvest, but also working for the harvest. You know, when we pray for souls, we should also pray about how specifically we can also work in their lives. Because Jesus said, pray for the workers, pray for the work, which basically means instead of just praying simply for people, we got to be very specific. I will give you an example. I shared this uh, last time in a devo with the Bangalore uh, one of the family group in Bangalore as well. But let me share this with you again because I became so much more convinced when I when I uh, when I understood these scriptures more clearly. Let's imagine that you have a friend Raju, or you have a you have a brother or sister whom you want to become a disciple, whom you want to get, whom you want to be saved, and you want him to go to heaven. Instead of just praying that God help Raju to become a disciple, God help Raju to get baptized, we should be just we should also be praying God help me to reach out to Raju. Help me to invite Raju to the next church service. Help me to share my life with Raju. Help me to share about how you helped me and how I repented my testimony. Let me take some time out for Raju this week. Let me take him out for dinner or let me call him home this week and get some time with him. When we pray specifically, when we ask God how God can use us in a powerful way. When we are praying and when we are working, God does amazing things. God uses us in such a powerful way. The mission team has departed from Sikkim. The school of mission people have gone back to Bangalore. But they keep on praying for Sikkim. And even though they have gone back, they still keep in touch with the friend they reached out to. No, one of the friends they reached out to, one of the friend's sister's flat reached out to is one of their neighbors. Her name is Dr. Minakshi. Even after sister's flat left, they kept in touch with her. They had been inviting her from before, but amazingly and surprisingly, after they left, few months after that, she, she decided that she also wants to study the Bible. She comes from a Sikh, a Punjabi background. And now she has been studying the Bible every day over the phone, of course, because she's a doctor and we cannot meet her physically every time. She, she tries to keep the social distance. But the sisters from Bangalore and uh, the sisters from Sikkim, they have, been, they have been doing conference call and they have been studying the Bible with her on a daily basis. And she is changing. My wife shared with me recently that she just wrote a te text to one of her friends, you know, that we, we have been reaching out to. Her name is Supriya. She has been praying for her every day. But apart from that prayer, she sends her one text asking her, how is she doing? She asked her, how are you doing, Supriya? I've been praying for you. Supriya immediately called her back and just said that, how, how, how do you know 
how are you praying for me because my mother has been sick and i was also thinking about you and i saw your text and she was just amazed by seeing that one text message that how my wife has been praying for her you know praying is so important but adding your work into those prayer is also so important being specific and continuing to do your part is so important when you do both the things together god does amazing things and so many life changes i strongly believe that god wants to use each of us in a very powerful way and these are just few examples apart from this there are so many and i am sure that god has been working in the lives of people that you are praying for and i want to encourage you don't stop praying but also remember god wants to use you not just for praying but also for working so if you are praying for people also ask god what can you do what is your part that you need to do so that that person's life can change add that into your prayers when we do both the things remember that the harvest is plentiful and when you ask the lord of the harvest and when you are ready to work of course god will do amazing things great things will happen life will change thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you this uh, this morning thank you so much uh, for all your prayers for our church once again i want to request you all to keep us in your prayers and keep on doing great things for god may god bless you all thank you so much shiva for inspiring all of us and uh, you know a lot of time uh, in a difficult situation or in any calamity we tend to focus very inwardly we think about me my family myself my needs and the easiest thing is to forget the mission that jesus has entrusted us with sikkim mission team and the stories of sikkim takes us back to the days of evangelism to the days of reaching out to people studying the bible with them and seeing them getting baptized and thank you for teaching us that how we need to pray for harvest and god is going to bless us abundantly these are just not the great stories of sikkim but uh, the stories of uh, men and women who saw the grace of god in their life thank you brother and thank you for the work that you do and continue to inspire us couple of announcements uh, for all of us um thank you for giving the poor contribution and monthly tithe to help disciples who are in need and continue to advance god's kingdom there's going to be pioneers meeting today at 7:45 pm if you do not have the details please reach out to your regional leader or family group leaders september 6th uh, which is next sunday from 4 to 5:30 pm there's going to be a webinar uh, by john and karen louis Uh, and the theme is connection through the ages i hope you have taken part in the survey uh, please do invite your friends and family members who can really benefit from this webinar another exciting news is for south region only and there's going to be quiz over next 3 weeks september 6th is going to be quiz on god the gospel september 13th on the letters of paul and september 20th um the quiz on is going to be on kings and queens in the bible i hope everybody is getting ready and we are going to have an exciting time let's end with a word of prayer let's pray <laughs> father thank you for uh, inspiring and encouraging us father through the great stories of how people found you thank you father for the work that you do and through many christian you continue to inspire us you inspire us father through your word God you encourage us through your holy spirit and teach us father that there are many more people who need to be invited just like us who need to be studied with father just like us who need to be saved just like us and who need to be reached out every single day father thank you so much father for your grace thank you so much god for your love thank you so much god for your mercy and thank you so much god for your forgiveness 
which we cherish and rejoice in every single day. Keep our disciples, keep the world safe. God, it's only you who are the hope for this hurting world. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.